G'day and welcome to the Investor Motivation Podcast. Uh, my name is Robert Gowdy and with me I've got... Amy Lehman again. Jeez, we didn't even rehearse that. How did that <laughs> happen? Um, yeah, thank you for joining us again. Uh, today's topic, Amos, what are we talking about? Today we'll be talking about how to best financially prepare for having a family, you know, getting all the right things in place to do that. We're not going to go so much into the nitty gritty, you know, costs of hospital cover and actual birthing a child or anything, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just talk about the main things to put in place to make sure yourself and your family are protected. Right, fantastic. Before we do that, um, we'll do the acknowledgement of land and I might have a crack this time. Go for it. Yeah, since you don't even need to read it, but I do. Um, on behalf of the Investor Motivation Podcast, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay our respects to elders past, presents and emerging. So probably not quite as fluent as you, but no, not no. bad. Made no, a start. No. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll also at the end of the, after this one, we'll go through about our advisor meetings and perhaps just talk a little bit about dividends. So back on the investment side of things, I thought there yep. was a, an interesting, um, yeah, comparing dividends to dividend yield and just, I suppose, my thoughts on that. Yep. Yeah. So where should we start uh, when you have a f- family or starting to think about having a family? Yeah. Well, from obviously. a financial point of view. <laughs> now, this is also something I have not done. Rob has done, so we'll get a little bit of you know, past insight and what you could have done better maybe, what you think people could do for themselves. Yep. And then I'll just do whatever I've researched and yeah. hopefully we can talk about it. But yeah, obviously it's a very, very exciting time for people that are you know, considering starting a family. It's a very big step to take. Um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics had a stat that 300,000 babies are born in Australia every year. Wow. So I'm sure a lot of those are you know, first new- newborns to a family. Yep. So I'm sure there's a lot of people going through this every year that you know, when you, if you don't read about it and things, you just don't know what you need to do and how to protect your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, are the baby bonuses still there, Amy? There's a, you know... uh, yeah, there was a, a big boom in baby bonuses, wasn't there? And then you mm-hmm. heard, you know, people were having multiple babies just, you know, some, you know, just for the baby bonus, which was a little bit negative and a little bit positive. But uh, yes, there is a little baby bonus still. It's only a couple of hundred, though. Right, okay. And then, yeah, obviously you get subsidised for costs. Yes, yeah, and and back in when when they were first introduced, it was thousands of dollars, and mm. uh, um, yeah. So and I think out, out of our four children, uh, we got it for the last one, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think it, uh, we were probably well set up, but uh, I think we moved into a new home, so I think that went towards a new fridge. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but we heard plenty of stories about a lot of that money went into flat screen TVs. Yeah. Um, so, anyhow, I, I think the the cost of setting up. Um, when I look back to you know the big cost is that initial one where you have your first child and it is bassinet, cot, yeah. and probably kit out the home to make it safe and. Yeah, you know, there's there's so much, uh, you know, so you know, pram, yeah. um, car seats and. You know, Clothing. Yeah, it, it's a big list. Yeah. Um, Is it true on movies? I know I see a lot when people have kids and they go to like parenting classes. Does that happen in Australia? Did you do that, Rob? Oh, the antenatal classes? Yeah, just I don't oh, know. Well, we, de- care for a baby. we definitely did. Oh, no, not the care for a baby. Yeah. Um, it was more so around the, the birthing of the baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there were those official classes that we did, um, but not. Um, here's now how you look after and I remember yeah Elizabeth yeah. you know was reading the books and uh, yeah uh, back then this is Lewis is 24 years old now so it was more about yeah trial and error and talking to to parents yeah. you know, the grandparents was where probably a lot of that Experience information people. came from yeah he's just seeing on movies all the time there's all baby parenting classes on how to burrito wrap a baby <laughs> okay. how to coddle and everything I just didn't know if that was TV show thing or real life? <laughs> yeah, a bit TV show, but yeah. probably now a YouTube thing. On, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, some, some of the you know, social media and, and, and those yeah. sort of tips. But in terms of the, the financial cost, what, what first brings to, to mind for you, Amy, that should, you know, where, do, where do you start? What do I have to think about? Um, um, personally, and I guess this is even pre-having a family or children or anything, but an emergency fund for me is the, probably the biggest thing, especially yep. if you've got children, you know, if something was to happen, a big expense was to come up, just being able to, you know, get through that without having to be flustered. I think right. peace of mind and just having a good cash reserve buffer 
for me is really important. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, that, that would relate very much to you know, home loans um, yeah. and houses and you know, houses that were built and purchased based on two, two incomes. And mm. then someone has a baby and yeah. the, the game changes. Definitely. Yeah. So in terms of you know, financially starting, you know, thinking about starting a family, but also you know, setting up home, mm. you know, do you think people are thinking about you know, the amount of debt they take on, ready for when they do have a, have a baby, Amy, is that...? I think a lot of people possibly don't think about the future that far in advance about having a baby. It's, yep. you know, people are generally living in the moment, trying to make the best of what they can at the moment, especially the younger generation that I'm a part of. But, I don't know, I think something like this is really important to make people think, you know, decisions we make today, the size of the home loan we take today is going to affect our cash flow in the future yep. and our ability to set up a good cash reserve buffer for a family. Right, and obviously a buffer, but also can, you know, can, um, can your spouse, your partner, who, you know, whoever stays at home with the baby, and yep. it's not always um, the mum, but you know, it does give the flexibility to have that first 12 months at home. Yeah, can or you six live months. Off one income? Yeah. Know, and still repay that large mortgage if that's what you choose to take out at the start. Yeah. Years yeah. in advance. Yeah, with, with the yeah. others understanding, you know, some people love their jobs and want to continue to work as soon as they can after the child yes. is born. And obviously that's everyone's right to do so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course there are, you know, childcare opportunities so that both of you can return to work, but it is also about funding that childcare. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and clearly with and what's happened over the last 20 years, particularly the childcare has become very expensive, mm. hard to get spots. And, and that is because uh, everyone is working probably as hard as they ever have yep. in terms of the hours put in that, you know, the husband and wife are both working full time. Yes. And they have to, to meet the, the needs of, of home, of, of life. Yeah, expenses of having a child and yeah, yeah general so, living. All right, so building up, a, obviously, the amount of debt you take on when you first purchase a home, if you're thinking about that, mm. most people probably aren't, um, but then you've got your home, then building up cash reserve, you know, to make sure that it, it can give you that freedom yep. to have a bit of flexibility, not to have to go back to work, yep. you know, within two or three months. Yeah, be able to live off one person's income and know if an emergency was to happen, you know, you've got something there to protect yourself. Right. So, Amy, are you also thinking about what happens with, um, you know, the, the cot, the pram, or all that stuff, that, that cost, or is that something I, that you think, you know, the grandparents might chip in a bit oh, here and there, and, uh, no. and, yeah. I definitely wouldn't be relying personally on anybody else to take care of that. I think yeah. everyone should be able to, you know, be self-sufficient and, you know, pay for things that they want to pay for or whatnot. But, um I think outside of the emergency fund that that is a cost people need to save up for to be able to pay for yep. when it comes to so that you're not withdrawing any money from that emergency fund. Yes. That's purely for emergencies, hence the name. Right. And, and probably in reality, what happened for myself, and I know that uh, happened for others, you know, that mm. the first child, um, you know, the, in, some, in, in our family circumstance was, you know, the first first born across both sides of the family, but first grandson. Gifts? Yeah, here is... Uh, was yeah. it more, sorry, prammy things or was it just clothes? I... Uh, yeah, probably oh. more, yeah, they were, both sides of grandparents were keen to help out with some of the, you know, the bigger costs, the yeah. cots, the, the stuff, you know, the prams that were, you know, the Emmelunga, which was the, uh, oh, you know, the big Rolls Royce. German or you something. Know, yeah, I'm not sure where <laughs> they were from, but, you know, um, smooth riding machine though. Um, <laughs> well pimped Let's up. Let's move on from that. Yeah, so <laughs> it uh, definitely has moved on. Things look incredibly clever and yeah. you know where they go from pram, pram straight into car seat. Yeah. But yeah, uh, there was definitely a want for grandparents to contribute to that mm. and to help out, yeah. um, which was lovely. Yeah, that's yeah. lovely. Because yeah, when, when you're having children, you're generally right at the start of, of, of business, work and everything. Yeah. It's, you're, you're not in, you know, there's no spare money. Yeah. That's mm. fair enough. Each, yeah, each to their own. I just, yeah. yeah. Yep, and not not all grandparents will have that ability. Yeah. So, I think to be in a position where you can do it independently by yourself, um, yeah, you've got to put yourself in that position. Yeah, I think when you're thinking about setting yourself up as best as possible, you obviously will take all that into consideration and you know set up that as much as you can. Yep. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, yeah, we spoke about life without two incomes. Um, yep. And, you know, stopping work for a period of time, um, you know, to get used to the new life, particularly for your first child. It's, yeah. a, it's a bit of a shock to the system. I'll, it's a I'll lifestyle pre- change. It is a lifestyle change. And I, I still remember some people saying, yeah, that, um, yeah, it won't change what I do in life. And, uh, and I thought, OK, yeah, no worries. Good Blissfully luck. unaware. Good luck with that. Um, but it has to change yeah. um, your life. Um, and for yeah, the oh, for the better. I, probably the one thing, this is not a financial thing, but an emotional, psychological thing. Mm-hmm. The purpose that um, you know, when when Lewis was born, the purpose was insane. Yeah, I thought, oh, geez, okay. You know, why did I wait so long? Uh, or didn't wait. Uh, what? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. You don't know till you get there, though. Of yeah. course. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, just you know, this overwhelming sense of purpose was. Yep. Ah, this is what's it, what it's all about, oh. and it, it was yeah special feeling and uh, yeah yeah, um, but back to the uh, the more boring stuff, which <laughs> is the uh, the finances. Um, yeah, where would you like to start? Obviously, I, I did a bit of a list for this when we before we kicked off. And yeah, yeah. It, it, well, I, th- I think on that you know note of income, where some one person might be out of the workforce for a lo- very long time, that at the beginning is initially, you know, to take care of the baby. But I think you also need to think about the future and what if you were out of the workforce, not because you've had a child, but because you've been in an accident. Yep. You really need to prepare for those worst case scenarios and that's where, you know, your personal insurances definitely come into play. Yep. So, um, yeah, so having, you know, before a child's born and obviously probably when you buy a house, you've got a yes. lot of debt. Yep. Um, you've got to think about, you know, covering... Your, your spouse, yourself, uh, covering the income, covering the debt yep. to make sure that if you're out of action or you pass away that you've got things things in order. Yeah, the family's covered and I don't know if you really want to be thinking this far in advance but I think when you have a family this is when you do start to think about it but like you know how is the child going to get through schooling when they're older, what education pathways do they want to have and how much do you want to leave your family so that they're not stuck in a rut or under undue stress when it already would be a difficult time yep so we're talking about life insurance um and that sounds like an expense yes how can we structure the life insurance um this is a loaded question of course how can we structure the life insurance that it's not hurting your cash flow because cash flow is not going to be better during these times when people aren't working and yeah um, yeah how can we provide the life insurance without it hurting their you know, the money coming out of their personal account. Yep, so you can have, obviously, life outside of superannuation, life cover, and that is when it would affect cash flow. But if you yep. wanted to avoid that altogether, you can have life insurance within your superannuation. Um, if you've had super for quite a few years now, you've probably already got some default life insurance within there, so that would definitely be worth looking into if you haven't already. But obviously, within super, the premiums are funded from your superannuation balance. So your cash flow is unaffected yep. and you just know that if the worst was to happen, you know, your beneficiary that's loaded on your superannuation account would receive the lump sum of super cover you have as well as your super balance. Great. Okay. So that's, and, and that's for life cover. So if someone passes away or what they call TPD, which is total and permanent disability. Yes. Um, and income protection can sit within that realm as well of superannuation. Yep. Uh, but trauma insurance, trauma covers for cancer, stroke, heart attack, and yep. there's a big long list of, of nasties um, that can't be included within superannuation. No, that one will be a cash flow one, but is you know extremely important to have. You've yep. got to pay for those medical expenses up front, and you know it's again another income out of the out of the cash flow situation. Yes. So it can provide a lump sum to fund that and yeah, yeah keep now, you through. Amy you mentioned default funds uh, yep. default insurance that, uh, that you go into um, start when you employ you get a fund and Australian super whatever it is and they'll give mm-hmm. you some default insurance yeah can you what sort of levels is that is that is that enough it gen it's different for every single provider so you'd have to look at it and it's always going to be so if you do have it with Australian super I'm not sure the exact insurance provider that underwrites it Mm -hmm. but it will either be you know a tal or something like that an asteron life or one path so they're the actual insurance provider and it will just be held within super and generally i think if it's just the default cover it might be around the 200,000 mark for life and tpd Um, and then the income protection 
might only be a thousand dollars per month. Per month, yes. Right. Yeah. So and you want to modify that to make sure you've covered, you know, your debts. You get a reasonable lump sum that can provide your family an income when you're not around. Yeah. And or so able to. with the average, yeah. So is two hundred, two fifty enough? Of course, the short answer to that is no. You no. you you want to you know think about you know think about future education costs. Mm-hmm. You want to think about how do we reduce debt, um, where that gives the ability for your spouse, the surviving spouse, can choose. You know how much they work. You know, can they be home uh, to you know look after the family? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, give mm. them the flexibility, the choice. Yes. They may not want to do that full time, and family and childcare may help out, but it will give them choice. Yeah, and definitely the same goes with turtle and the permanent disablement. If you're at home and you need constant care, do you want to have to pull your loved one out of the work first to look after you and be a full time carer? Or you can be provided with a lump sum to be able to fund that yep. and let you know life continue for the family as best as possible. Yes. Um, would levels of cover be different between husband and wife, depending on who's who's working? Um, I think life and TPD are generally covering at a household view. Yep. The um, debt and you know future things that the household wants as a household rather than individually. Um, income protection, on the other hand, if you've got that within your superannuation, it can only cover up to 70% of your income. So that will be different based on, you know, the individual's income. Yep, cool. And sometimes that's 75 and can be plus your superannuation yes. contributions as well. Yeah. So definitely recommend, obviously this is all general advice, as you know, um, recommend that you speak to, uh, you know, a suitable advisor that's you know, qualified and has a bit of passion to the life insurance game as well to structure yeah. it in a way that you have the cover. It doesn't need to be expensive. It gets expensive if you're a smoker and vaping yeah. um, is also seen exactly the, same. exactly the same because they really don't know, you know, what the effect's going to be for vaping down the track. So yeah. they just say, so premiums essentially go up um, by, by they nearly double, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You can have seventy-five percent loadings with any smoking, and as well as like BMI. If you're not, you know, a healthy, healthy person, they will obviously charge you a little bit extra. Yeah. So, and that's part of that underwriting process. It's yeah. a probably a half-hour conversation on the phone with one of the insurance companies. Mm-hmm. Your advisor will explain what happens and how it's how it's handled. But you've got to disclose um, your your health, your BMI, your height, weight, yeah. uh, family history, and so on. So, yeah, they. When they're insuring people for you know what you know hundreds for, of thousands of dollars. Well, yeah, yeah quite yeah, absolutely, and it can be you know if you've got six hundred thousand dollars worth of debt on the home, mm. you know you'd have that amount covered if you wanted a couple hundred grand for education costs, plus you wanted half a million dollars you know at four percent to bring in twenty grand per year. Yeah. Um, you know, as a passive income, you know we are talking about one point five million or thereabouts so yeah. you know they're not going to take on you know these risks lightly yeah. so that's called underwriting it's a process where you have a duty to disclose definitely so life insurance never the the biggest and most fun part of it but um let's go to even something uh, less fun which is estate planning you know we probably need a will um yes you know guardianship what happens there yeah definitely i'm gonna do a whole separate podcast on that as well for yeah estate planning for young people and those starting out and having families yep. but wills power of attorneys have a financial power of attorney that can make decisions for you and a medical and have the conversation with your loved one as well to you know consider the worst case scenario and how you would like to be treated yep and also um and you're within your wills you can talk about guardianship that if um, mm-hmm. You know, husband and wife. You know, s- something happens to you both um, when you're travelling separately from the kids. Um, yeah, who looks after the kids? Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's something that can be stated. Uh, I think you know, for Elizabeth and myself back in the day, um, yeah, we decided not to have that argument, and yeah. that, that we didn't do do that. But um, yeah, but we probably looking back, that's something you'd recommend for new. Yeah. Families. Well, I think. Yeah, it's for everyone to, to choose, uh, but for us it was, um, you know, who, whose side of the family get, gets what, yep. what child, and uh, um, and that was, yeah, probably yeah. just something too we... Too hard basket at the time. Yeah, it was a too hard basket one at the time, and yeah. um, so that that was our decision to make a non-decision, yep. which was probably wasn't the best decision, <laughs> but that's just how it was at the time, and uh, but I said that's going back 
you know, yeah. nearly quarter of a century ago. Yeah. Gee, you shouldn't say it like that. Luckily, oh, well. Yeah, quarter of a century. Um, so, yeah, the guardianship is an important part of that estate planning process. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah what about um, one thing that I noticed, once you had the kids and obviously the costs, uh, the costs of toys and things and gifts, mm. you know, have come down because of obviously China and, you yeah. know, low wage, um, countries yep. importing very low cost stuff um, one thing we found that you know Christmas time we'd had we had a Tarago had four kids <laughs> and it was chock a block full of stuff and you take it to your home and go where's this going to go yeah. um, are you going to hide that till Christmas day yeah that's right it just seemed to filter in yep. and you know so much money was spent but I've seen a lot of clients have a preference to saying well you know can I buy some shares yeah um so savings plans where instead of the kids getting too much stuff mm -hmm. just too many toys and where does it go and you know do the kids appreciate it when there's just so much yeah um you know having a you've got some clients that you know grandparents you know just contribute money to an account mm -hmm. and then they go and buy so that's probably another idea yep, or thing definitely. to think about uh once the family's up and running because you'll find you know some people will find that they're their parents and their grandparents will want to be generous. Yeah, um, that and could be enough for the kids. Yeah, and that's and that's right. something that um, that's an objective that I've seen a lot of clients. Yeah, they want to see the generations you know be looked after, and and it, it's often one of their things. They, their objectives they want to help. Um, yeah. And instead of just buying lots and lots of toys, um, there's more meaningful ways that you can help out. Definitely. Yeah. What other issues? Um, like I said, we aren't, we were not going to go into childcare costs and things like that, but that is obviously consideration if you're wanting to start a family and if you are wanting to go back to work, there are options to get you there, um, full childcare costs. And if you just go to Services Australia, there's a list of eligibility requirement to have that yeah. subsidised. So I would definitely go and look at that. Mm -hmm. There's also another resource online called the Australian Parenting website, and it's just raisingchildren.net and it will take you through other costs of how to like kit out the home, what the basic startup, bassinet costs, clothing, maternity wear, all of that. Um, so if you want to get into the real nitty gritty, definitely go and check that out. Great, fantastic. Very good, Amy. I think good discussion and yep. we'll do the, um, the estate planning one on another week. Yeah, definitely. Very good. Um, now, better just roll back to, we had our advisor meeting this morning. This yep. is where Obviously, we just come up with lots of different topics, and today's topic was about um, just looking at, you know, comparing dividend yield to the actual dividends received. Mm -hmm. And and CSL was a good example back in probably only eight years ago, you know, per year, it was $2 per share. Mm -hmm. And the dividend yield's always been a percent, but the dividend now is $3.30 something. Yep. So the dividend growth in percentage term has been phenomenal mm -hmm. if you've held all the way through. But in terms of what the dividend yield, which is a, a, calc a simple calculation of you know, the money you, you receive, you know, $2 divided by the share price. Yep. So the dividend yield itself, the percentage calculation, never looks impressive, particularly with a, 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 a high growth business like CSL. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people make decisions based on the dividend yield. Well, I think you should actually look back and see what dividends have been paid yep. and look at the growth to say, geez, over the last 10 years, CSL's dividends have probably gone up by 100%. Yep. Might be 80, might be 70, don't know, but a lot. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and I think that's a better measure of, uh, to say, you know, what are you looking for in a business? Yeah. It's And and that's where, you know, Telstra's been probably a... a, a you always provided a great dividend yield, yes. Um, but it's not grown that dividend, and the share price has been, well, it's probably Stagnant, really. it's probably still less than where it was 30 years ago when they yeah. first listed. Um, so, yeah, less focus on dividend yield, and perhaps yeah, drill down to say, well, of the profit, what yep. do they pay out? The payout ratio, and the growth of that profit, which means the dividend yield might be the same. But over an extended period of time, the dividends have probably gone up mm. by a lot. Yep. Yeah. Definitely a good point. Fantastic. Um, also worth mentioning that obviously there's a lot of information on our website. 
Um, and if anyone's got any topics they would like covered, yes. Amy and I are only too happy to research, yes. find out, and have a conversation. Yeah, we want to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, and it's been good for us to go through this process and mm. Yeah, from a technical point of view, it's really helping and, uh, and understanding what people want. So, so, yeah, please let us know what you're interested in. Definitely. Cool. Thank you for listening. Adios. Cheers.